Hi there, and welcome to my lecture on psychoactive drugs. Drugs typically have their impact in the synapses or the gaps between neurons. So in this mini lecture, we're going to focus on the synapse. Just as a reminder, neurons send action potentials down their axon. At the end of the axon is the axon terminal. The axon, when an when an action potential arrives at an axon terminal, it triggers the release of a chemical or a class of chemicals called neurotransmitters into the synapse. The synapse is the gap or the space between neurons. Um, you can see here a drawing of an axon terminal. Each of the little spheres is a called a synaptic vesicle. You can think of them as little purses that carry neurotransmitters in them. When an action potential arrives at the axon terminal, those purses of neurotransmitter migrate or move to the very bottom of the axon terminal, and they open up and they dump their chemicals, neurotransmitters, into the synapse, into the gap. All right. So just as a reminder, the action potential is an electrical signal. So information within neurons is communicated electrically. Between neurons, it's not electrical, it's chemical. So synapses are where communication happens by way of chemicals. The neurotransmitters are dumped into the synapse. They migrate across that gap and some of them are absorbed or um, grabbed by receptors that um, have a shape that matches with the neurotransmitter. When that happens, the signal, in, a signal starts to be generated in the receiving neuron. So each neurotransmitter, and we're going to talk about some neurotransmitters today, each neurotransmitter has a different shape and the receptors on the receiving end of a neuron are like, you could think of them as like baseball mitts, but each of them have different shapes. Um, each receptor can only grab or hang on to neurotransmitters that have the appropriate shape. So you can think of the childhood game of the wooden box where there's holes of different shapes and wooden blocks of different shapes and the child has to figure out, okay, what shape or block fits in the circular hole? What block fits in the square hole? Receptors on receiving neurons work the same way, okay? It's often talked about as a lock and key mechanism. When the right key or neurotransmitter shows up, the receptor grabs it, and that actually opens a gate. So when a receptor grabs a neurotransmitter that's the right shape for it, then what happens is there are gates um, in the membrane of the receiving neuron that are opened when the receptors grab the properly shaped neurotransmitter. And the opening of those gates starts a whole um, reaction within the receiving neuron that allows for communication of a signal. Now, uh, we mentioned glial cells briefly uh, when we talked about the basic building blocks of the brain. And I said that glial cells serve lots of different purposes. In the drawing on this slide, you'll see uh, the sending neuron and the receiving neuron are both blue. And underneath them is a green colored glial cells. They're, they're not green in your head, but for purposes of demonstration here, it's green. That glial cell is hanging around the synapse because what it does is it captures any unused neurotransmitter. So the neurotransmitter doesn't float around there forever. Um, the glial cells sort of pick up all the leftover trash, if you will. Now I said that there are uh, gates that open up in the membrane of a receiving neuron on the other side of the synapse. And these purplish shapes on this slide are those gates. And what I want you to see is in this picture, 
There are two differently shaped neurotransmitters. To make things easy, one neurotransmitter is shaped like triangles, and the other neurotransmitter is shaped like the letter T. And you'll see on each of these purple gates that are in the membrane, they have a little opening. One shaped like a triangle, and the other shaped like a T. When a triangular neuro shaped neurotransmitter fits into a receptor that's the right shape, triangular, then that's going to open up this gap, okay? That's how communication occurs between neurons. Now, there are probably a, a hundred different neurotransmitters. I've listed sort of the most common seven neurotransmitters on the, this slide. While there are a hundred different neurotransmitters, scientists think that about 90% of the work is taken care of by about 10 different neurotransmitters. Now, how, why am I talking about synapses and neurotransmitters in a lecture on psychoactive drugs? Well, the reason is that drugs change the way that neurotransmitters work. So if you're interested in drugs and the effects that drugs have on people, then you have to know about synapses and neurotransmitters because drug action occurs in the synapse. So for example, here I've got a slide for a neurotransmitter called GABA. And GABA is the big sort of break neurotransmitter of the central nervous system. It slows everything down. It's the inhibitory neurotransmitter. So GABA calms us down. Um, drugs that want to calm people down work by increasing the effectiveness of GABA. Okay, so anti-anxiety medications, sleeping pills, tranquilizers, alcohol in high doses, those all work to increase GABA activity to calm everyone down. That's all I'm going to tell you about synapses and neurotransmitters in this lecture. Come right back and we'll talk about psychopharmacology.